Starting off the news this week is actually a new story we weren't able to cover last week. There has been a massive breakthrough in nuclear fusion experimentation. For the first time ever, more energy was produced than was put into the experiment. Nuclear fusion has often been hailed as the solution to humanity's energy problems, as a clean source of near inexhaustible energy. This particular experiment was conducted by US scientists at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. While working at an atomic level, nuclear fusion works quite differently to nuclear fission, which is currently a major source of power in the modern world. In nuclear fusion energy production, hydrogen isotopes are thrown at each other and superheated to such a degree that they fuse into helium, releasing a neutron and a colossal amount of energy. It is this process that powers the stars of our universe, so as you can imagine, there's a lot of potential here. Fusion power won't be energising all our homes for quite some time though, with even the most optimistic suggestions saying it won't be ready for the action needed on climate change. Despite this, the work still has to be done and this is a very exciting development. And now over to Ben with the news. Thanks Doug. Well, we've had some very exciting paleontology news this week, especially for big fans of ichthyosaurs such as myself. A paper has just been published in the journal Current Biology, interpreting the abundant fossils of the large-bodied ichthyosaur genus Shonisaurus at a site in Nevada as evidence for these massive marine animals repeatedly returning to this particular site in big groups. These ichthyosaurs, specifically Shonisaurus popularis, lived during the late Triassic period and reached enormous dimensions, rivaling those of living whales, and have been found in remarkably high abundance at a locality in Nevada the Luning Formation at Berlin Ichthyosaur State Park in West Union Canyon. Here, dozens of associated skeletal remains, as well as fragmentary bones, belonging to these ichthyosaurs have been uncovered over many decades. There's a particular site within the park, known as Quarry 2, which preserves at least seven skeletons on a single bedding plane and has been the subject of quite a few previous studies. But this new paper also takes into account the fact that Shonisaurus fossils have been found across about 2 square kilometres of the canyon and coming from a range of stratigraphic levels within the rocks. The researchers looked for evidence of any kill mechanisms evident in the sediments here that might potentially explain the abundance of skeletons across the park, such as volcanism or other kinds of sudden environmental change, but failed to find any. And they also rule out the possibility of a stranding event, since they were clearly deposited in a deep water ramp setting. This lack of an obvious kill mechanism, in addition to the fact that almost all the macrovertebrate remains from this locality belong to Shonisaurus, or at least some kind of ichthyosaur, led the researchers to suggest that this is evidence of these animals repeatedly returning to the site over and over again, potentially for many generations spanning over hundreds of thousands to millions of years, considering how many horizons and the rock sequences they come from. Interestingly, the researchers also note how all the remains of Shonisaurus found here so far are either of large, fully grown adults or of very small individuals, which micro CT scans revealed are actually of embryonic and newborn Shonisaurus, and so it's hypothesized that this may represent some kind of birthing ground for these giant ichthyosaurs which they returned to over and over. This is also supported by the apparent absence of an obvious abundant source of prey at this site, and so these ichthyosaurs may also have travelled large distances between feeding and birthing grounds, as modern cetaceans do. It's a tantalising and incredibly exciting idea to think that adult grouping behaviour among marine tetrapods has been around for 230 million years. And as someone who loves ichthyosaurs, it's amazing to read this and think about what other ichthyosaur behaviours might be revealed one day. Also in the news is the fantastic announcement that a beautifully preserved new skull of a pterosaur called Kairajara has been found. This pterosaur, a member of the Tapajarids, famous for their incredible head crests, was originally named in 2014, but until now was mainly known from bones of the body, not the skull. This new specimen comes from a site known as a pterosaur graveyard in Brazil, a Cretaceous aged bone bed that also preserves other species of pterosaurs as well as some dinosaurs. This remarkably well-preserved skull allows the paleontologists studying it to gain a much better understanding of the anatomy of the animal, revealing all sorts of new characteristics of the bones. They also noted an interesting variation in some of the crests of these pterosaurs and other specimens in the bone bed for which these structures are known, and tentatively suggest it might be evidence of sexual dimorphism, or possibly due to the fossils preserving different growth stages. So some absolutely brilliant paleontology news this week, revealing all sorts of new information about the biology of some remarkable extinct creatures. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's news. I do hope you enjoyed and have a very lovely Christmas. We'll see you next week before the new year, but until then, Merry Christmas.